Welcome back to another episode of Sip and Tally Films. And uh, today we're bringing you draft product Ahmad Sauce Gardner. Uh, DB for the Cincinnati Bearcats. Uh, a lot of buzz about Sauce Gardner, so uh, let's get right into the film. Cue the intro. Appreciate you coming back to the channel, and if it's your first time here and you want to be with us for the entire 2022 draft season, make sure you hit that like button. Uh, subscribe also, you can be notified when these videos drop randomly. Uh, without any further ado, let's get right into Ahmad Sauce Gardner. All right, so the first play we got down here, and again, not all plays are going to be uh, positive, but you know, a bunch of these plays will be positive, trust me. First one, missed tackle. Let's let it run. Now he sees the running back coming here, and he, he has eyes on him, and he's got away from uh, number one from Alabama. He just got to come up, you know, make that tackle. Goes low, guy kind of hurts him. And we'll see it better from this back view. Trey Sanders kind of jumps over him. Right there, he disengaged right now. He's gotten rid of the receiver, which is the good part of it. He's gotten rid of the receiver, you know, got got him over here. This is the good part. I gotta come up and finish, huh? Gotta come up and finish. All right, here we got Gardner at the top of our screen. Garden, I think that's number seven. Number seven or number one. This is going to right here. Watch the coverage on this. He's going to, this cat's going to give him a ton of moves to try to get open. He's going to stay in phase the entire time. Playing a bell technique. So you really, he can't, he can't let, can't let him get behind him in any form of matter. That's why he got this outside leverage right here. Look at the transition of the hips. I don't know if you can see that, but look at the transition of the hips. When a guy tries to run the out part of it. Boop, boop. Real quick. Real quick. That's real quick, real smooth. Now, he tries to give him a second move. He's sticking him outside. He's going to try to turn it back up. Nope. I'm going to jam you a little bit. You ain't getting over top of me. In great position to defend it. Defending multiple moves. And didn't get a pass interference. Defended multiple moves by Mechie. I mean, not Mechie, by um, number one. I forget his name, but he was the fastest guy by far on this field. Defended multiple moves and didn't get beat by him. That's great coverage. All right, so this next play, we we showed you not necessarily a bad tackle, but uh, him being hurdled while he tried to tackle a guy early. Now we're going to show you an example of a good open field tackle. This is our guy here. Pressed up on, I forget number seven's name. I guess I need to look it up. Pressed up on this guy. But he's going to be able to get off this block and then go make a great open field tackle on number one. Locked in. Got his arms extended so he can kind of see what's going on in the backfield while he's still pressing. Because his eyes are not looking at the receiver. His eyes are peeking in. They're peeking in right through there to see what's going on. Because he got this guy coming in motion. See the guy in motion releases him. Now it's one on one. It's my my Jimmy versus your Joe. Great tackle. Matter of fact, it's even a TFL. That's a tackle for a loss. Great tackle. Great eye discipline. All right, now we're back with another clip. Up here, one on one, man coverage. Great, great man coverage. It's nuts. He did all that foot fire. Gordon just gave him the inside release. He did all that foot fire and didn't really go anywhere. All that and didn't go anywhere. Back it up. Look at that, in phase, in phase. Sink down, still in phase. You can't cover better than that. 
You can't do it better than that. Can't do it better than that. Outside leverage, because I want you to go in and help my help at. In phase with the little jam. He sink, I sink, he turn, I'm right on top of him. Right on top of him. Right on top of him. And that's um we. Alright, another example of good coverage. This guy, this is gonna be a fade, and watch how he uses the sideline to be an extra defender. He's got this guy gonna release outside. He's gonna release outside, and Sauce gonna use the sideline as an extra defender to kind of run him to him and kind of use his that that should be that right hand to kind of make sure he feel and kind of feel where he at the entire time. You know, just push him to the sideline. Now, at this point. If this ball is being thrown to Jamison Williams, it has to be perfect. The only spot is open is, I, I don't know the, the distance of these ticks, but I know it's not a yard. It may be half a yard. So he got a half yard window to throw a ball, and it probably would have to be perfectly in that circle right there for him to get it in there. So it's great technique. And even though he's behind, he is behind. And, it, you know, if, if, if Bryce Young threw this, it would have to been a perfect ball. But that's still during good coverage, especially pressing him to the sideline like that. And again, everything is not, you know, all positive. It's not a straight glory fest for Sauce Gardner. Uh, let's just see what happens on this one. Oh, he's down here at the bottom. This is him down here. Down right below the 20-yard line. Again, he's going to have an opportunity to make a tackle. It's mano a mano. Got an opportunity to make a tackle. Right there. Make it. Make it. Don't make it. Kind of whiffs. Kind of whiffs. And again, it's on the running back. Made a great tackle on uh, Jameson Williams in the open field. Got a one-on-one -on -one tackle right here. It, I mean, it's him versus him. Nobody between. Ain't nothing there but air and opportunity. Make that tackle. Or at least dive at his feet and get him on the ground like you did the last time. Little whiff. Try to tackle him up high, around the arms, around the shoulders, knowing that guy been in the weight room more than him. And it's probably just genetics that make him bigger than him too, but still. All right. So now we got him in a straight press technique. Like they in cover one. At the bottom, you got um, three. Well, basically, he's not in coverage. You got these three guys covering these three guys. You got your free safety. And you got him one-on-one -on -one up top. So whatever they in at the bottom don't matter, but you got one-on-one -on -one up here at the top. Let's let it roll. Get the mouse out the way. Good jam. Look at that. All over him. Where, 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 could he, where, where could he have thrown the ball? Nowhere. Don't Never mind that stuff going on at the bottom. Never mind that stuff going on at the bottom. Let's go back to the top and focus on sauce. One-on-one -on -one with, uh, I think this is one-on-one -on -one with Jameson. Press, nothing. Look at the hand fighting. I'm trying to slow it down while I can get the hand fighting in the feet. So he tries a little outside release. Bam, I'm going to jam you up. Got both hands there. He hadn't moved his feet. So he's still in good position. Still in good position. Kind of knocked him off his route a little bit. Now you come with a secondary move and put my hands on you again. You're right in front of me still. In great position. Great position. So if Jameson wants to just turn and run, he's in great position to turn and run. If he want to throw the back shoulder, he can't do that because he, he's closed the gap on him. He tried to throw him off and run a little curl. He's not strong enough to do that. Great position. And I don't know if that's number, that's not Jameson, that's number seven. I misspoke. That's number seven. That's the freshman they got, Brooks. That's not Jameson. But still, locking Brooks down. And on this one right here, just watch the communication. Watch the communication. Watch the hips. Watch the fluidity. They changed this off. And he can do this because he's so gifted in his hips, you know, to, to be able to change direction and, and do things like that. That's, that's a mark of a good, really good corner, the fluidity of his hips. They ban joining, I think. So Jameson takes that initial step, and he kind of jabs himself to take away the inside. But then he re realizes it, that he's trying to get outside. So right now, these two guys are trying to confuse 
Sauce. They're trying to confuse him. He going that way. He's going to try to come inside. He realizes it. And just passes it off. And I'm going to take this guy. Because he know his homeboy got the outside release. And he got number two on the inside. Look at all over top of him. Even though that's the, that's the freshman again. But still, there's no space. Locked him up. And if they try to run the little out route or this this deep sail or whatever this is over here, he under it. He under it with, with somebody over top. Now, he ain't worried about this guy no more. That's the other cats. So gotta got to deal with that. But his guy, locked up. Locked up. And allow the defense to get pressure on the QB because of that great coverage. So right here, let's take a look at one of his interceptions. And this, this is from 2020. Again, he's up here. You see him with the arrow. And this is going to highlight his ball skills. Not still good with the feet. A little late because he, you know, kind of peeked in on this guy right here. But, you know, he's got he got his guy covering. So now he's he's late. He's behind. Kind of beat. Guy doesn't catch the ball. Now. Look at his reaction to go get it. It just pops up in the air. Natural athlete. Good ball skills. Go get it. One of his interceptions. And this is before he changed the number one. He was number 12 in this film. So you can see from the film, uh, Sauce Gardner has an amazing skill set. Great hips, great feet, ball skills, uh, toughness. The only two things that I would say negative on here are the high tackling of the, the running backs. With a high and a low tackling of the running backs, not really getting them down. And he really didn't travel with the number one guy. I don't know if, because they did have another good corner in Kobe Bryant. But I don't know if they felt like Kobe was good enough that he didn't need to travel and kind of shut down one guy. Or they just liked him to play on one side of the field. Uh, that part would come from being in the staff meetings and all that, I don't know. But to be, uh, to be the guy, and he's projected to be one of the top corners, if not the top corner in the draft, I really like his hips. I really like his hips, and I had a. It was a one that I thought I was gonna, that I, I thought I clipped, where you see him communicating to his teammates while they're in zone, like they're not, you know, not not a man to man situation. They're in zone, and you can see him pointing, probably yelling in and in, in as a receiver breaks on the in route with somebody that's coming to the outside that he has to cover. So he he does a good job of communicating uh, ball skills. Not really sure how fast he'll run because even on one of the plays I showed you when he pinned. Jamison to the sideline, Jamison was starting to pull away from him. But he was in good coverage while, you know, the play was still going on. But had it been a play where Bryce was probably throwing the ball to Jamison, Jamison was starting to pull away from him. But in his defense, Jamison would probably pull away from almost everybody in college football. And uh, But I'm sold on Sauce Gardner. A lot of people um, from the Ravens were saying Sauce at 14. And I was like, no, nah, I need to see him play. And even though I know Alabama kind of did what they did to him in the the uh, semifinal game, I'm sold on Sauce Gardner. I'm not sure where he'll go, what team will pick him up, but I'm almost certain that they're going to get a good player. So um, this is my film review on uh, Ahmad Sauce Gardner uh, for Cincinnati. Uh, probably cornerback one, but he's the second guy on my big board. And I'm um, not sure if he's one or two because the other guy is David Ojogu. But... He's one or two. So I appreciate you guys for tuning in. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. Uh, make sure if you like the uh, con content, you like, subscribe. And if you want to talk about the good, the bad, or the indifferent of Ahmad Sauce Gardner, put it in the comment section. Make sure you share it too. Uh, 2020 draft season's here, people. Uh, contents for everybody, not just Ravens Flock. Peace. With the